Hello and welcome to the Australian Biocommons webinar series, where we aim to share useful information about the latest digital techniques, data and tools for the life sciences community. Each month we hear from our local and international peers who present a bioinformatics topic that we hope will support Australians to deliver their best environmental, agricultural and medical research. My name is Melissa Burke and I'm the Australian Biocommons Training and Communications Officer and I will be your host for today. We particularly appreciate those of you joining us live today. There will be the opportunity for you to ask the, our speakers questions via the Q&A function, which you'll find on your screen. And we will read these questions out at the end of the presentation and answer them. This session will also be recorded and you'll soon find the video on our YouTube channel, along with recordings of previous webinars and workshops. We also hope that you'll keep in touch to hear about future webinars and other events via the channels listed on the screen. Before we start today, we would like to acknowledge the traditional owners and their custodianship of the lands on which we meet today. We pay our respects to their ancestors and their descendants who continue cultural and spiritual connections to country. We recognise their valuable contributions to Australian and global society. Today, we are thrilled to welcome Dr. Gareth Price and Dr. Johan Gustafsson to speak about the wonders of using Galaxy for online data analysis. Dr. Gareth Price is the Head of Computational Biology at QCIF Facility for Advanced Bioinformatics. In this role, Gareth manages the diverse spectrum of researcher-led questions involving genomic data, provides training in genomic data analysis, as well as leading Galaxy Australia as a service manager. Gareth has 20 years experience as a bioinformatician and genomic scientist. His expertise spans experimental design, assay performance, data QC, data analysis and data interpretation. His work also involves a variety of model organisms from microorganisms, fruit flies, mice to humans, as well as non-model organisms. Dr. Johan Gustafsson is a bioinformatics engagement officer with the Australian Biocommons. Johan consults directly with researchers, bioinformaticians and infrastructure platforms that contribute to the Bioplatforms Australia framework initiatives. This work aims to document bioinformatics infrastructure and workflow requirements from the framework initiatives, connect bioinformaticians to the computational resources across the Biocommons and ensure that the bioinformatics resources developed through these initiatives are reusable by the broader life sciences community. Johan has a background in mass spectrometry, including experiments and data analysis for molecular imaging, liquid chromatography MS, and molecular imaging. I'll now hand over to Gareth to get us started with the presentation. Thank you, Melissa, and welcome everyone. Uh, I'm thrilled to be able to talk about Galaxy Australia for the first component of this webinar today. Galaxy Australia is the web-based service for all Australian life scientists. It is a hosted graphical user interface or GUI interface that lets you conduct accessible, reproducible and transparent computational biological research. We can be found by Googling us for Galaxy Australia or simply going to usegalaxy.org.au and we'd be very keen to always acquire a few more followers through our Twitter account at Galaxy Australia. I'm going to talk a bit broadly about uh, how Galaxy fits into uh, global research and dive into uh, the platform itself. So Galaxy is a website, but it's actually much, much more than that. The standard user experience might be simply uploading raw files for your analysis, executing one or generally many uh, analytical tools on that data, downloading your results and rushing off to publications in peer reviewed journals or theses. But it is really a lot more than that. Galaxy exists because of Galaxy Project, an open source global community with 15 years of constant global operation and a community based contributions from hundreds of individual contributors over those years and still constantly. Galaxy as a platform 
there are over 130 public instances uh, globally and many more private instances and the service Galaxy Global Service is very proud to have ticked over in August this year uh, citations in 10,000 different peer review publications and theses a wonderful milestone to achieve. Galaxy is backed by over 7,000 analytical tools, which can be put onto a public Galaxy instance of your choice, Galaxy Australia in this case. It's also backed and supported by a global training network, which now has uh, 190 different training topics associated with the life sciences and also with operating a Galaxy service. And that number continues to grow. It supports multiple users in the sense that Galaxy Australia can have tens to hundreds of simultaneous users logged on at any point in time. Uh, but really that multiple users is about fostering collaborative sharing. So you can share your data with your lab group, with your collaborators locally and overseas to uh, really continue to champion that uh, open robust science. Uh, it is web accessible. Most of us, I believe, probably access it via your desktop, but if you're so inclined, uh, any web accessible device will allow you to access Galaxy. In terms of Galaxy's approachability, something I wanted to talk about quickly, uh, we are a graphical user interface and we rely on a, a range of interactions to give you feedback on how your data is looking. And Galaxy is quite proud of running a very simple traffic light system. Uh, for any data you have or any analysis you have will spend most of its life green which means it's it's okay you've imported your data your analysis has returned uh, orange yellow depending on how your screen projects it is data that's being analyzed at that point in time and i'll show you later where we do all our analyses grade is uh, for when you're queued up on the system and red well Red is error and it does happen. And it happens not necessarily because of any inherent failure. It's often as you're exploring a tool and exploring the settings of the tool and understanding how it works with your data. The best way we can give that feedback is via uh, that is not the appropriate combination of data and analyses to be performing. In terms of data, uh, we're quite proud of a, a rich metadata data management system. For those who have not heard of Galaxy before, we the terminology is histories. All your data is maintained in an individual history. You can have one or many histories in your library of histories. You can move data between your histories, but they are private to you until you choose to share them with anyone you choose to share them with. They can get a copy of that uh, for comparison or reanalysis. All the public galaxies, but in particular Galaxy Australia, maintains a large collection of public data libraries to allow rapid training and rapid reanalysis of public data. I have already mentioned it's uh, the way we manage data is inherent with a lot of rich metadata. That's very true. At any point in time, you can probe the Galaxy. It is completely open source. You can find out how your data was analyzed, where it was analyzed, the citation of the journal from the tool that came from is all captured to allow you to be able to reproduce any of your analyses in the future. And part of data management is getting data in and out of the service. Uh, there's multiple ways to do that, uh, but we're quite proud of one of our more recent additions to the service, which is import and export functionality linked to your personal Arnet Cloud Store repository. And if you're not aware you have a personal Arnet Cloud Store repository, I, I can only encourage you to go out and find that out. Uh, that's a fantastic service and we've linked that to Galaxy Australia. All said and done, uh, if at any point in time you would like to talk to us about your data analyses or management of your Galaxy instance, uh, please do contact us at help at genome.edu.au. What Galaxy actually looks like, it's a web interface. Web interfaces are not novel anymore. However, Galaxy, I wanted to show you on the left hand side of the screen there uh, are approximately a thousand different tools with uh, text based contextual searching to help narrow down. Uh, the tools are grouped into functional categories based on research such as ChIP-seq, RNA-seq, variant calling, but you can search on any tool uh, simply by typing into the toolbox. The right hand side of the screen uh, in all green there contains a completed history. In this case, it's a history for doing metagenomics analysis of a complex uh, fecal sample. Uh, 
the middle of the screen is interactive between uh, news, events, tools and data. But Galaxy is not about running a single tool, nor is it about waiting for one tool to finish before you execute the next tool. Galaxy maintains its efficiency and gains its efficiency through workflows. Uh, shown on the screen here is a workflow from converting raw, short read, NGS sequencing data, all the way through to a complex visualization of that microbiome population that I was suggesting in the previous slide. The multiple tools here, the Galaxy Scheduler will take your raw data, appropriately pipe the results from one tool into the next. All you have to do is push the single click play button at the top right of the screen to execute all these tools. Uh, if you're so inclined, you can ena enable email notifications so you know when it's finished. And that's where you get your efficiency through Galaxy efficiently handling uh, complex workflows for you. As an aside, the workflow is savable and shareable with your colleagues. Uh, it is publishable as well. But, and Galaxy being a web solution is really a web solution for tongue in cheek, a command line problem. Not everyone wants to write command line code. Not everyone can. It is another language you need to acquire. So Galaxy is enabling complex command line execution through that graphical user interface. So you do not need to know the syntax of the code that you're asking to execute. And for those that are well versed in, in HPC time, you do not also need to know the job running time to predict that for your HPC environment. So what I've shown here is a, a relatively standard tool execution in Galaxy, Trimomatic on fast queue reads to remove poor quality reads. Uh, the user experience for this is about four clicks to identify your data, to set your thresholds for good or bad quality reads and execute. In practice, there's the 10 or so lines of code that are actually being sent to the computational resources to execute that. You can do this again and again reproducibly in the GUI Galaxy interface. You can do it again and again by typing that out, but uh, the typing it out is going to take longer and potentially is a little bit more error prone. So Galaxy really gives you that graphical interface to that complex syntax of command line. I just wanted to re-emphasize those workflows again because I realized the previous version of that was a little hard to see. Uh, this I would say is one of the more simple workflows, but again, by the time you put it on the screen, it looks uh, potentially quite complex. It's simply taking sequencing reads, performing quality control, performing uh, removal of poor quality reads, re-reporting on the quality control, and summarizing all of that into an interactive web page and PDF. Uh, easy to set up, very easy to execute, and almost bread and butter for short read sequence analysis. And something that would, again, you could script a command line, you could do tool by tool, but why not make it a workflow, save it and run it time and time again. Now workflows uh, for those that are new to Galaxy can actually be somewhat intimidating. You're basically presented with a blank canvas and told to build something. I imagine that's how many painters feel at that. Here's a canvas, make me a, a piece of art. So one of the new features we've enabled on Galaxy that we're thrilled to have on at this point in time is tool prediction. So collecting data based on uh, peer reviewed use of workflows, we can now give you uh, a prediction of the most common sets of tools that are used uh, in a chained event for you to really help you navigate and explore through a style of data analysis that you may not have performed before. You would use this in complement to the Galaxy Training Network where we present best practice workflows. But this is one way of helping reduce that inertia about exploring a new data set to give you a coach through uh, path through your analysis. That said, uh, Galaxy is not or does not always have every single tool you need on it at this point in time. So please, if you're using Galaxy or considering using Galaxy, uh, 
we make on our landing page a very big obvious button right in the middle of the screen that says request tool or data set. Please do get in contact with us if there is a missing element in that jigsaw puzzle of your workflow. Uh, there is actually a publicly navigatable Galaxy tool shed. It's essentially an app store for Galaxy. It's updated regularly and I updated uh, the total count as of last Saturday at 7,923 tools. They span 40 different, seven different tool categories. And so if we don't have a tool on Galaxy Australia that needs, you need for your work, then please use that request form and get in contact with us and we can put it on the platform. If you're so further inclined, uh, the Toolshed Wiki is a great place to learn about taking any command line script you have and wrapping it, uh, projecting it out as a Galaxy tool. The same applies to references. Why bother loading in uh, your particular reference genome time and time again for your analyses? Do get in contact with us uh, to see if we're able to host a reference genome or a reference data set for you. And we're, we're very proud to be hosting hundreds of reference data sets locally in Australia and supported data sets through the Galaxy Project data cache, uh, access to hundreds and hundreds of more Galaxy, uh, sorry, reference data sets. And they are all distributed at high speed globally using uh, the CERN virtual machine file system or CVMFS. Uh, what all this means as well, it means that since Galaxy Australia was uh, formalized in early 2018, which is off to the left side of this graph, uh, we've seen a fantastic growth uh, year in, year out in total users and total number of jobs those users are performing on the service. So we have over 10,000 users who have generated nearly 8,000 workflows, which they regularly utilize. We have just shy of 2 million jobs being executed on uh, over 3 million data sets. And we're really proud to support uh, all that research distributed across Australia. Speaking of distributed across Australia, uh, the beauty of Galaxy is that we makes use of compute resources right around our nation. The website is hosted at this point in time in Queensland at, at Chris Cloud in, as part of QCIF. That's where the main storage and main queue are. Local to that, uh, we are bringing on board a high performance compute Pulsar. And a Pulsar is a, a basically a, a working infrastructure for Galaxy to send jobs out to. Uh, Pulsars for HPC and a Pulsars for high memory. We will have a Pulsar for high memory uh, in Melbourne, supported by the University of Melbourne and Melbourne Bioinformatics alongside Pulsars that we already have operating in Melbourne. And we have Pulsars in Pawsey which support at this point in time, COVID-19 based research. Some of these are future plans like high memories, they're actually underway and we're super excited about that. I have mentioned already short read sequencing, um, but we will be entering into the phase of long read sequencing and intensive job analysis using high memory and HPC. So don't be uh, constrained by what you believe Galaxy can do. Our national roadmap this year and throughout the next few years is to bring on the resources that allow you to do your work. So before I hand over to Johan uh, to explore in depth one more uh, complex use of the Galaxy platform to really showcase to you what it can do, uh, I wanted to take a few minutes and a few slides to talk about Galaxy Australia's very proud role in responding to the global pandemic of SARS-CoV-2 and COVID-19. So Pawsey and NCI together put out a joint call for projects that would benefit uh, from use of their infrastructure to help uh, understand COVID-19 through research. As simultaneously to that, uh, the Galaxy project that 
global community of researchers that I mentioned at the start of the talk got together and said, what can we help do and enable uh, for consistent reproducible COVID research? And for any of you in this space, you'll understand and probably remember a few months ago that consistency and reproducibility were not necessarily two words you would have associated with early days of COVID-19 sequence analysis. Uh, now they are. So working with Galaxy Project, uh, which is based in America, Galaxy Main and Galaxy Europe, we were able to rapidly deploy uh, one of these Galaxy working infrastructures, one of these pulsars uh, at the Pawsey Supercompute Centre in WA. We're able to tag for all of our Australian users, any request for a tool to do COVID-19 analysis would be sent to that dedicated hardware and those results returned rapidly to the user. Uh, globally now, we have a fantastic system for genomics, evolution, chemoinformatics, proteomics, amplicon based data analysis or Arctic analysis and direct RNA seq analysis inside that reproducible environment where each of the participating services, which is now more than Australia, America and Europe, uh, we have tested so that each one of these workflows we know works and produces a reproducible and identical result on a, at least two of three, if not two of more of the public Galaxy servers. What it actually looks like is a number of complex workflows, all of which can be found at the Galaxy Project website, so covid19.galaxyproject.org, where uh, the acceptance again of short read sequence is pre-processed, assembled, uh, variant timing and variant analysis, sequence analysis and evolutionary analysis is all performed on a series of workflows uh, to give to you and give back to those researchers an understanding of the COVID-19 genomes that they may have found in any sample they sequence. It's not just enough to say we can do that. We want to make that as clear and obvious to you as users of the platform as well. So Galaxy Australia, as I said, holds public data. We don't, we, in that public data repository, we hold data to analyze, but we also hold publicly available workflows for you to execute on your data. And inside our public workflow section, we're very proud to have multiple workflows to support COVID-19 research. Again, all of which are key to rush off to Pawsey, run on dedicated compute and return those resources to you as rapidly as possible. So before I hand over, I just want to uh, acknowledge the Galaxy Australia team, Simon, Igor, Tom, Nick, Catherine, Nguyen and Michael, which are distributed between uh, QCIF and Melbourne Bioinformatics, our ongoing um, primary support from Australian Biocommons, uh, support from AIDC, Pawsey, Arnet and the Galaxy Project. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gareth. Uh, I'd like to continue by presenting a uh, publicly available multi-omics workflow for Galaxy. The reason for this is that it demonstrates how you can harness the capabilities of Galaxy uh, that Gareth just described to create a reproducible and shareable analysis and then combine it with a fluid visualization strategy. The specific workflow that I wanted to talk about is developed by a team that includes the Norwegian University of Life Sciences the University of Minnesota and the University of Freiburg. The link to the original Galaxy Project article was provided on, on this slide, uh, as well as to the study papers. So the premise of this study was to generate an understanding of the organisms in a specific niche. Uh, in this case, it was a biogas reactor in Norway. And the study wanted to discover how microorganisms in the biogas reactor interact and how they use nutrients from the environment. So if we just take a quick walkthrough of the, of the, of the basic approach that they took. Uh, samples from a biogas plant were moved to a lab scale reactor. They did a serial dilution to extinction experiment under anaerobic conditions, uh, grew microorganisms on cellulose and then performed extractions uh, for the various omics. So for the transcriptomics and the genomics, uh, this was sequencing on an Illumina platform. 
And for the proteomics, uh, this was a mass spectrometry with a Q-exactive. So in terms of the omics data sources that were generated, we, they had metagenomics, metatranscriptomics, and metaproteomics. Interconnected galaxy workflows were developed for each one. And the visualization of outputs was through uh, an interactive RStudio session, which allowed them to generate integrated plots. So I'm gonna do a quick step through uh, of the individual stages of each workflow and to give an idea of the breadth of the tools um, that are being used. And, and in doing so, what I'd like to emphasize is that Galaxy is acting as a version controlled workflow manager and it's allowing the user to capture the provenance of their work and share this with the research community. So this is an overview of the metagenomics section of the workflow. So one of the, one of the very first things to point out obviously is, is it's very complex, but if you look down at the bottom of the workflow, you'll see there are offshoots from one of the tools to both the metatranscriptomic and the metaproteomic workflows. So this is the integration point for the three separate workflows. So we'll jump in now and have a, have a look at a bit more of the detail for the metagenomics. So the very first um, step is data collection, quality control and pre-processing. So input FASTQ files from, um, from the sequencing are uploaded to Galaxy via FTP and they're then converted to a paired collection. So this is merging all the separate files into a single collection. It's then passed initially to two separate tools, Trim Galore and FastQC. Trim Galore removes adapter sequences and um, FastQC is a quality control tool. The next stage of the pre-processing uh, generates three separate outputs. Uh, and this is a flat file uh, containing the sequence reads, which gives you abundance information for the sequencing data but then two separate data sets that contain the forward and reverse sequences. So you can see that already at this early stage, the workflow is becoming complex. To identify the microbial communities that are in the samples, uh, the pre-processing -pre outputs are used by two separate tools. The first one is Metaspades, which uses both the forward and reverse sequences to assemble, uh, this, uh, to assemble sequence contigs and those contigs, so those sequences are passed to MaxBin2. And the MaxBin2 tool takes both those sequence contigs, but also the, read, the reads from the flattened file to create bins. And these bins uh, or meta -assemb uh, metagenome assembled genomes are then passed to a tool called cat bins, which taxonomically places them. And it's those bin classifications that are retained for later use in R. So that's the first point at which we've generated an output, which will be used interactively later on. Okay, so um, just to keep track of things, I'm gonna move that to the top of the slide. So the very next stage of the workflow uh, is that Metaspades also passes those sequence contigs to a tool called frag gene scan. Uh, this is a pretty important part of the workflow because as I pointed out on one of those earlier slides, this tool um, passes putative genes and proteins to the other workflows. But not only that, this same tool also passes protein sequences uh, to a tool called InterProScan with some pre and post processing. But the end result of this part is that you have a functional annotation of those putative protein sequences using multiple um, inputs from uh, databases. Parallel to that, the protein sequences also pass to a tool um, called HMMER. And this tool uses a dbCAN model to predict the presence of carbohydrate active enzymes. And then through a, through a series of different tools, reformats that output. Finally, those functional, functional annotations and the enzyme predictions are combined, sorted and reformatted 
all with the end goal of having another final output retained for visualization in our studio. And this is a table with one protein per row and the functional annotations in columns. And it's together with that bin classification um, that you then have the complete set of outputs ready for the metagenomics part uh, of the integration. So that was just the metagenomics section and it's a lot of steps. So the really big question is how do you keep track of all of this? Because complexity in bioinformatics workflows is not something that's going to disappear. And of course, this is one of the reasons to use Galaxy and Galaxy gives you two strategies as a workflow manager. One, which we already saw in Gareth's part of the talk is the workflow editor. Um, and I don't necessarily want you to focus on the detail here, but I want you to focus on the fact that it allows you to get a visual representation of your workflow, which you can also move around. So each one of the boxes can be moved, so you can arrange it however you like. But it's also important to realize that you can visualize the major sections of the workflow quite easily. Um, and this is something that allows you to share it, um, share it, modify it, quite easily. The second option that you have uh, and that I quite like as well is the workflow view. Um, the workflow view is presenting from top to bottom a list of all the individual tools, inputs and outputs and parameter sets for your workflow. So you can read it top to bottom. So these are two example visualizations of, the, of this first workflow presented in a human readable format. Um, but remember that your galaxy history is recording your workflow and parameters for an analysis. And for those workflows which have been published, um, you don't actually need to recreate these workflows. Uh, so you can, uh, you can access these, upload them to your user account on Galaxy. You can edit them as you need and you can then continue sharing them. So we'll jump now to metatranscriptomics. Now this workflow um, is significantly shorter, uh, but it still includes a quality control step uh, that sits in parallel to trim galore, just like the metagenomics. Um, and it then splits the forward and reverse sequence reads. The split reads here um, are filtered using a tool called sort Myrna, and they're passed to Callisto Quant. And here's where those putative gene predictions from the metagenomics workflow are incorporated into this second workflow. And so the outputs from Callisto Quant, again, are converted into a tabular output for retention, um, uh, for retention and then inclusion in the integration. And the third and final workflow is metaproteomics. And this is the most straightforward element. Um, so it's even simpler than the two preceding workflows. Here, the raw files that are, that are generated by the mass spectrometer are passed to MaxQuant along with a parameter file. The putative um, proteins predicted from the, from the metagenomics workflow are also then passed to MaxQuant. And the, it's the protein groups output, which is another table uh, that MaxQuant produces that is retained for that integrative analysis. So we now have all of the outputs converging on, um, on R for that, integrative, uh, for that integrative analysis. So moving on to the integration. So the flexible integration of outputs made use of something called the Galaxy Live platform. Now, in essence, what Galaxy Live is, um, is it's a service that allows you to make use of things like Jupyter, Jupyter Notebooks uh, and R Studio sessions in the cloud. This is something that's currently available on the Galaxy Europe platform. Uh, but it's really important to note that Galaxy and Galaxy Australia is, is not a static platform and it's under constant development. And one of the really exciting developments that's upcoming is uh, the ability to access interactive environments. So the slide I've put up now shows uh, some examples of the things that you can access uh, through Galaxy Live. Um, and 
as an R Studio user, I think this is probably the most impactful element of this approach because it allows you to connect reproducible chained workflows to the ability to interactively integrate and visualize a workflow output. That's really, really significant, particularly because it has an environment that I'm comfortable with using. But it's also significant because just like the Galaxy community, the R community is open, friendly, and there are many resources available for upskill. Okay, so taking us back to the workflow example uh, and the integration of those multi-omics, at the top of this slide, there's a list of the outputs that were produced by those three separate Galaxy workflows. The integrative work that was performed by the, um, by the Galaxy team covered a few different aspects. So th these, are, these are listed here in the blue boxes, it includes phylogenetic binning, taxonomic abundance plots, an overview of the carbohydrate active enzymes and time series quantification. In the interest of time, uh, what I'm gonna do is basically cover the most straightforward, which is the time series um, quantification. So here, uh, what I've done is to show some pseudocode to give you an idea of the integrations that were performed in R on the Galaxy Live platform. Uh, so obviously because it's R and it's in a development environment, there is some scripting involved. Um, and so this is why I've shown here this, this pseudocode. So in essence, the steps that were taken were that the metaproteomics and the meta transcriptomics output data was combined. So the tables were um, merged using a common identifier. So the, and these were the majority protein IDs from the protein groups file output by MaxQuant and the target ID field from the output of Callisto. Uh, once the tables were joined, a log transformation was performed and then what's called a pivot longer step was, was performed to put the abundance values in the same column so that you can act, so that you can plot them effectively. Uh, a Z score normalization was then performed following that prior to a, a GG plot. Now GG plot is a very useful tool available in the tidyverse uh, which allows you to quite nicely plot tabular data. And this is the output that they produced. And this plot is showing the changing amounts of transcript and protein for two different enzymes across two microorganism community members. Right, so this is just a, this is a snapshot of the data that they um, were producing as outputs of their separate workflows. But it's a powerful demonstration of the ability to integrate and visualize omics data. Um, and it's very important to stress that this output is flexible because of the interactive environment, you're not locked into these, um, into these types of plots. Uh, you can present them in any way that you want, even, even with the individual elements combined. Okay, so I wanted to finish up with some take home messages uh, because I think these, these really underpin the value that Galaxy has as a platform. And the first one is the obvious one. It allows you to chain tools together into workflows. It is a workflow manager. Um, the tools that you can combine, they include well-known tools. So an example for me is something like MaxQuant, uh, but you also have the potential to influence the addition of new tools. Now, the ways that you can add new tools to Galaxy Australia, are uh, you can request the addition of new tools, uh, or you can learn how to wrap tools yourself. Uh, if you go far enough, you can become part of the community and actually contribute to the code base of Galaxy. It's an, it's an open and welcoming community. And so if, it's, if that's something that you'd like to do, I'd encourage you to do that. The workflows uh, themselves allow you to streamline um, an analyses. So things like pre-processing of your data that you need to do again and again, and that you want consistency for. It allows you to replicate analyses and allows you can, to can collect sufficient provenance for your workflows that someone else can pick it up and they
can achieve methods reproducibility for your work, which is something that's really, really important. Uh, the workflows can be shared. So anyone else can potentially pick up your workflow, make modifications to it, and they can then share their version of that workflow. And you can also access a complete citation index for all of the tools that composed your workflow. And I think one of the really important points is that everything that I've mentioned um, before and everything that I've uh, spoken about on, on this slide, it's all so that you can spend more time and energy on the fun stuff, the flexible and interactive exploratory data analysis, um, generating knowledge from your data. Basically, you shouldn't have to spend your time on things that um, something like a workflow manager, something like Galaxy Australia can make it easier for you. Um, if you need to get in touch or get help, um, here, here, are some, here are some links. So the first one is the uh, website URL for the use, for the use Galaxy service uh, in Australia. Uh, and there is the email to get help if you run into any problems. Thank you very much. Thank you, Johan and Gareth, for that great overview of Galaxy and how you can use the different workflows um, to em empower your research. We do now have time for questions. While you're having a little think about things that you want to ask, Johan, if you could move to the next slide, please. Oh, the one after that, please. I wanted to let you know that if you do want to learn a bit more about Galaxy and get some hands-on experience with it, we are running two workshops coming up in November and December for Australian-based researchers, where we'll take you through the basics of Galaxy and how to set up workflows and run them. Okay, let's have a look and see if we've got any questions this afternoon. So there is one question there already and it is, can Galaxy workflows also cater for the analysis steps that may be done in a Galaxy interactive environment? Hey, Melissa, um, I might take that one if that's all right. Yes, um, go ahead. It's a great question uh, and it sort of, falls in a gray zone, I'm going to say. So the, the beauty of a Galaxy workflow is to make things eminently reproducible. Spend your intellectual energy focusing on the content and the settings in that workflow, execute the workflow, interpret the results, potentially retweak the workflow. Uh, the next few iterations of workflows that are going to be rolled out will contain uh, logic. So you can say filter based on a previous setting at a previous workflow step. But the interactive environments by their nature are interactive. And if you're going to code interaction inside a workflow, then it by its nature becomes somewhat more static than interactive. So yes, you can do it. Um, well, well, sorry, we're still exploring how well you can do that. But it may actually be if you want to use the power of that interactive environment, that's where you break out of your workflow, interact with your data, you absolutely can port it back to your history and re-execute a follow-on workflow. So you may have two workflows, a pre-interactive environment workflow and a post-interactive environment workflow. But if you build that interactive environment inside the workflow, then it becomes a little bit more static. Thank you, Gareth. There's a related question to that is, roughly speaking, when do you think that the interactive environments will be deployed in Galaxy Australia? It's a great question and, and thankfully it's not as long as a piece of string. Uh, it is on our 2020 roadmap. So I would very much hope to see those uh, available for users before the end of the year. So another good question that's just come on is, who is eligible to access the Galaxy platform? This person's asking because they've recently graduated and they're going to lose their university access, but they want to continue analysing data from their research. Uh, the Galaxy platforms globally are open. Galaxy Australia has taken the line that our primary source of uh, 
users, our client base are Australian academics. So we give a larger amount of resources to Australia academics. We do acknowledge that everyone does uh, or could have local and overseas collaborators in all phases of their journey from students, postdocs, lab heads and everything else in between. Uh, so it is an open platform to register on anywhere. If Galaxy Australia is not where you'll be, you might be moving to another country, uh, you might be changing affiliations, then we would encourage you to explore the other global galaxies, uh, which are all partners in this space. Essentially, though, the platform is open to everyone. Thanks, Gareth. So a further question here is, how do you manage the reproducibility of the workflow through, for example, persistent identifiers? Oh, we're getting a great series of questions today. Um, there's multiple ways to do that. So the platform itself, a tool on the platform may well be updated by version control pushed out by the primary author of a tool or by the wrapper. So the best way to capture persistence and reproducibility of an analysis you've done is anchor it inside a workflow because workflows absolutely capture uh, the tool versions and all the dependency versions that are required. So you can come back in six or 12 months and attempt to execute the same workflow and you can navigate through any challenges you may have about updated tools or databases. In terms of persistent identifier, Galaxy itself does not mint a persistent identifier for you. However, your workflow is a downloadable entity. You can download that uh, store it in your cloud store. You can do anything you need to track that as a persistent identity, but built inside that workflow is all the things to pr protect that reproducibility. Okay, thanks. So a question, hopefully for Johan now, we'll see, is are the tools that you, dem are the tools that you demonstrated available in Galaxy Australia? Yes, they should be. So um, we did some work earlier in the year with the Galaxy Australia team to identify which tools were missing. Uh, and so all the tools should be available at this point. That's certainly good news. So I'm aware that uh, Gareth has a, another webinar that he needs to run off to shortly. So we're going to have one more question and then we'll wrap it up for today. So the final question is um, related, related to privacy for genomic data. How does Galaxy handle that? Uh, that's a, yeah, we've got a really great audience today because there's some fantastic questions. We do. Um, there are two elements to that. So the transmission of data in and out of the service is uh, secured and encrypted. The, however, you do need to acknowledge this is an open source platform. Uh, we have protection at an infrastructure level for the data that we host on the service. However, it is up to the user of that service to manage the sharing of the data they choose to upload and who they choose to share it with. So absolutely, you need to be compliant to your own uh, ethics uh, certifications you have and you need to be aware if you share it that there's obligations that that next person could share but as a service uh, we do encrypt everything and at an infrastructure and a national level we uh, protect as best as possible. So there's just been one very last minute question that I will ask just for sake of fairness is is Galaxy <laughs> being used for anything other than bioinformatics? Uh, yes, and I can see another question come in. I'll answer both of them super okay, quickly. Sure. Uh, yes, uh, there are ambitious projects to use Galaxy outside of bioinformatics. Uh, it's traditional bases in life science, uh, but we're seeing that grow. It is a workflow and a tool platform, so it can be used for image analysis. I've seen a fantastic Galaxy for linguistics. Uh, if you have a command line tool that's wrappable, it can be put in a Galaxy. Galaxy Australia at this point is continuing to service the life science community, but that doesn't mean that's where we'll be forever and we can see that growing. Uh, and finally, after a workflow is run, is it possible to review the underlying code that was executed? Yes, yes it is. 
Uh, so we do make all of that transparent for the user. Great, thank you very much. We are going to have to leave the questions there for today. However, as Gareth and Johan mentioned, if you have any further questions, you can get in touch with the Galaxy team um, on the email address and the website that they showed earlier. Okay, so this is all we had time for today. Thank you very much for joining us and thank you for your very insightful questions. To finish up, a reminder that Australian BioCommons is enabled by NCRIS via the BioPlatforms Australia funding. Do go and have a look at the other events that we have coming up on our website where you'll find more information about the upcoming Galaxy events as well. Thank you for joining us and we hope to see you again soon.